And the books were open. And another book was open. And another book. Which is the book of life. Mm -hmm. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their world. Back up to verse number 12 and begin to read forth one more time. And Here is the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos for the gospel's sake. He was preaching an everlasting gospel and he was persecuted. If he had preached the gospel that just said that do the best you can or uh, uh, just be a religious person, they would have accepted him. But because he preached the gospel that said that you must, in order to be right with God, you got to repent. You got to live right. Yeah. You can't serve two masters. Right. You can't be saved on Sunday, but you cussing folk out on Monday. All right. Hey, All right. You can't be a preacher with a girlfriend on the side. Right. No, you can't be doing that foolishness. You can't be up in the youth choir, but at Parkside or Jackson High, you got your two or three girlfriends or boyfriends. All right. You can't do All that. Right. Why? Because the Bible said that the husbander must be first partakers of the fruit. Yeah. Amen. In other words, if you want to sing something, you better be living it. Amen. In other words, you want to preach something, you better be living it. Amen. The Apostle John brought an everlasting gospel, and it shook the whole world. Because the world used to have two types of people. There were those people that were a-religious. They didn't want nothing to do with religion at all. Then you had those people that were religious, but they still served the devil part-time. Well, John came with a gospel that he got straight from Jesus, and that gospel was only full-time Christians tell him. You can only be a Christian if you come full-time. We don't have no part-time position. And the people didn't like that. They wanted to be a part-time Christian. They wanted to still go to the club into the kingdom. You want to know what the book of Revelation is about? It just is the journey from John or Pentecost all the way to the second coming of Christ. All that the church would face. The different challenges, the different insights, the different angles, so that the church could be properly prepared for the battle at hand. So God said, John, we've given them an understanding of their experience, of what it means to be a child of God, the Beatitudes. He's even given them understanding in regards to what the saints and how they're to operate in all the letters to the different congregations. He said, but we must give them a secret coded message that gives them insight because they're gonna face a wily foe. And we want them to have perception and understanding, amen, to see what the church would go through so they can properly equip themselves to be able to handle. Well here, in the 20th chapter, 12th verse, he gave them a glimpse into eternity. Let us read verse 11. And I saw a great white horse 
And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it. And him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. My, my, my. Come on and read. And there was found no the majesty place. majesty of God. My Lord, come them. on. Come on. And I saw the dead. And I saw the dead. Small and great. It didn't matter if they were a millionaire or if they were broke. All right. It didn't matter if they were of the Rockefeller clan. Well, they were part of my God, some Al Capone's uh, uh, team. It didn't matter if they were educated or uneducated. It didn't matter what color they were. He said, I saw the dead. It's amazing how death do not care. Death don't care who you are or where you're from. Death don't ask you who your name is or what. Death does not discriminate. He said, I saw the dead, small and great. Stand before God. Isn't that amazing? You got somebody like Michael Jackson. Everything he's ever done in his life, people just cater to this thing. He stands before God, thinking in his mind, I'm still Michael Jackson. You ain't nothing. Lord. My God, Marilyn Monroe, some big movie star, showing her body all off. Don't you know I'm Elizabeth Taylor? My God. He said, I saw the dead, both small and great. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world, the devil will entice you. Tell him, you're going to be this. You're going to be that. Reject God. You don't need God. Reject God. You don't need him. Oh the devil paint a beautiful picture. He said, but I saw the dead. Both small and great. It didn't matter what you accumulated. It didn't matter what you've done. But you're going to stand before God. He said, I saw the dead, both small and great. Come on. Stand before God. Stand before God. And the books were open. Oh, standing before God. When he calls that number, we're going to stand before God. Now, the verse before said, His majesty was so great, they couldn't even behold Him. My Lord. But we're going to stand before God. He said, and the books were open. Come on. And another book was open. And the books were open. The E66. The Word of God was open. It said, and what? And another book was and open. And another book was open. Yeah. Book of your life. Come on and read. Which is the book oh, of life. Well, didn't nobody see that? Didn't nobody see when I went down there and done that? Oh, your record will be there. Oh, my God. God. Your no. record, what well, didn't nobody see you do? What well, didn't nobody know that you was doing? Right. That mom and daddy had no clue that you was involved in. Oh, your record will be there. He said, I saw the books, the Word of God, and I saw another book. That's why salvation is such a sidetrack for a moment. It's such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful agreement. My God, he said, listen, it don't matter what's in your book. It doesn't matter what the pages or how dark red stained they may be. If you just come to me before it's too late, amen, I will blot out all that mess that's in your book that shouldn't be there. All that mess is going to cause to stand guilty before God. If you come to me broken and contract, right. let me know you're sorry. Let me know that you, Lord, I'm sorry and I won't do it no more. I'm sorry the things I've done. I'm sorry I've sinned again. I'm not hiding from it. I'm not acting like I didn't do it. Everything, you saw all of it. I'm sorry for all of it. It's all in my book. It's all in my book, God. And I'm sorry about it. He said, everything in your book that shouldn't be there, he said, I will call the blood of my son. I will call the blood of Jesus to wipe, clean every age of sin. Everything you've done wrong, so much so that, amen, even after you get saved, you got a memory, and you remember that stuff. And in eternity, you're going to have a memory. My God. Because and I'm going to get to that in a moment. You're going to remember. But my God, when you're standing before him, you're going to be in awe of his majesty, and no doubt you're going to just be thinking, I said, now please, I sinned against such a God. God, I'm so sorry. And God is limited in eternity. My God, in his understanding of the sins you've committed because he can't see through the blood. My Lord. So he said, the book shall be open, and another book. Come on and read. Which is the book of life. Which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book. And the dead were judged. Come on. 
according to their work. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, the word of God. I want to read. According to their work. According to the life that they lived. Read. And the things gave Stop right there. Stop right here. We just want to preach this for a few moments tonight. Just for a few moments and pray for the saints of God. God pray for us. our children yeah. tonight. Just for a couple of moments when we're preaching the thought on the other side of the turn. Oh. On the other side. Now, saints, we cannot fathom eternity, so we're going to need prayer tonight. Oh, God. Because of the limited faculties that we have as humans, we cannot fully fathom eternity. If you fully fathom eternity and you're not saved tonight, you wouldn't wait to the end of this message to come up to an altar and pray. You cannot fathom eternity. Go over. Go over to 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 15, 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 15. On the other side of eternity, I just pray that the Holy Spirit will enable an understanding, a full understanding to be obtained. First Corinthians 15, 50. Come on and read. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. Come on. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, who he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise First not. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Come on. Now this I say, brother. Now this I say, brother. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. Neither doth corruption inherit corrupt incorruption. Come on and read. Behold, I show you a mystery. I show you, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. But we shall all be changed. In a moment. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye. Come on. At the last trump. Many people say, once that trumpet sound, I'm going to get saved. As soon as I hear God uh, ending the end of the world, they said it was a storm last night. Yeah. My God, or uh, a few nights ago, the big storm. Yeah. And sometimes you think, my God, uh, I can see God about to come. So as soon as I hear that trumpet sound, I'm going to run and get on my knees and say, God, forgive me. Matter of fact, I was talking to somebody. I forgot who it was, but I was talking to somebody. They were saying that they were either their child or somebody that was not saved. They were hoping that, my God, that storm, that, that storm did wake them up. They woke them up and they had them thinking about it. They like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, is that the one? My Lord. But to tell you the truth of the matter, I'm thankful that God uses those matters to convict you. But let me tell you this. If you heard it, it wasn't it. <laughs> now, I don't want to take one of the two from God. That God uses to get us all. Amen. Matter of fact, let him keep using that to get you. But I'm just going to let you know for a moment if I give you a little bit of comfort. Amen. If there's any comfort in it at all, my God, if you heard it wasn't it. They said in the moment, in the twinkling of it, he's trying to let you know in the smallest element of your narrow-minded concepts of time that I can get to a twinkling of an eye, which is far less than a second. Oh God! This was before NASCAR and all these things. Stopwatches could go and say one second, one one second, one one million dollars. Before even all those clocks came out, he understood that a second ain't long enough. He said, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, before one moment you're going to be sitting there, about to eat that big man. The next moment you stand before God. It's going to be no process. It's going to be no darkness. And you coming and whoa, whoa, and people walking around and oh, look at the, and no, 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 no. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Come on and read. On the other side of eternity. On the other side of eternity. Come on and read. Eternity is going to come upon you. Come on and read. At the last trump. At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound. For the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible. So this corruptible must put on incorruptible. Come on. And this mortal must put on immortality. All right, let's work through here. Now follow what you're saying. On the other side of eternity. Those that pass away or die, unprepared to meet God, will be going to a place called hell. Now let me get there in a moment. To spend eternity. Hell would be bad enough. You ever went to a fire? As a matter of fact, we had a fire going last night at the house. 
outdoors. And it got too hot. So my wife was like, no, 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 they can't be marshmallows right now. It's too hot. Let it, let it go down some. Let it go down some. So we walked away from it and let it go down. Well, while I was still over there, matter of fact, it might have even after it had gone down some, there were sparks flying, like little bitty pieces flying. But they would phase out most of them before they hit the ground. Well, one of them made it over to my arm, my hand. And I'm up here preoccupied doing this, that, and the other. And I realized, I said, man, this thing made it to my hand. And I'm looking at it. And next thing I know, I began to feel it. And the burning sensation, my goodness, of, of, of the pain, I don't know. Some say a, a certain type of toothache, but I, I don't know another pain in the world like being burned, like fire. Now, it would, hell would be bad enough if you were going to hell with this body right here. If the car was a split or your car went on the side of the road and you got hit. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a gentleman today. We're in a meeting today and he began to tell me about how he drove trucks, this, that, and the other, all of the roads. And you know what he told me? And I hope you think differently after I tell you this. He said, listen, I'm driving these thousands of tons of trucks all over America. I've seen all, every, all 48 states. He said, I can have count the number of times on my hand that I went to sleep. Not nodding. Oh, God. He said, I cannot tell you how many times my Lord helped. that I fell asleep. No. Don't you know, by not getting saved, you playing Russian roulette with your soul? My God. You don't know when you're going to leave here. My Lord. It's just mercy that's even. Don't think you're going to program your mind. I ain't going to do this and this and this. It's just mercy. Amen. It's just mercy that you're still here right now. Amen. Just mercy itself, my God. My Lord. So here, you're one step from eternity. David said there's it, there is but a step between me and death. Just a step, just a call. Just a call. My God, young people going to school feel a little pain. By the time they got a PR room, I got their day. Just a step between me and death. Now mind you, going to stand before God, he said, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. Follow this now. Your body would be bad enough if you were going to eternity with the body that we had. But you're going to eternity with a body made to endure and to enjoy heaven. Oh, God. Oh, my Lord. Go over. My God. Go over. Preaching. To Matthew chapter 25. Now, I'm going to repeat that point. You have no idea what you're dealing with by not giving your life to God. If you go to eternity unprepared, you are going to hell, not with this body, but with a body that was uniquely designed to endure and to appreciate and experience heaven itself, which this body cannot take. I'm going to show you. Let's look into the Word of God. Matthew 25, verse 31. Come on and read. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, come on. and all the holy angels with him, come on. then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, come on. and he shall separate them one from another. Uh-huh, all people, all nations, he shall separate them one from another. How shall he do that, Read. As the shepherd divided the sheep from the goats, come on, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand. Now sheep are obedient creatures. Sheep, you tell them over here, the shepherd says go over here, they go. The goat, they buck up against. You heard Billy go, the goat will buck up against. And you got two people, and he talked about the nature of these animals. He said in eternity, I'm going to separate those that were obedient to me. Obedient to my word. Obedient and said, Lord, I want to live for you. Lord, here's my life. Guide me and direct me, God. I want to be a child of God. I'm willing to allow your word and your spirit to lead my life. And then you have those that buck up against it. He told Paul, he, he stopped us kicking against the pricks. In other words, every time I try to deal with them, they tell me why they're not going to get saved. Every time I tell them, now, they tell me what they're about to do with them, but that salvation doesn't fit into their plan. I tell them, let's do it now. They tell me what they're enjoying and what they got going on and why they can't get saved. I say, well, come on, come to me now. They say, no, I can't come right now, my God, because I'm involved in this. And I, I can't, so I don't, and they say this, I don't want to play with God. You don't want to come get saved because you don't want to play with God. What you think you're doing right now? Amen. Don't play with God. Come get saved and be for real about it. Come on now. I don't want to play with God. Don't play with him. Give your life to God and say, Lord, if you help me, if you deliver me from 
Holy Spirit. I want to be saved. I want to do right. Change my mind, Lord. And I'll live for you. So here, he said there's going to be two camps in eternity. The sheep and the goat. Watch what he says, though. Come on, read it. One more time. Yes. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. Come on. But the goats on the left. Come on. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand. Come on. Come, ye blessed of my father. Yes. Inherit the kingdom. Yes. Prepared for you from the foundation of the Oh, my Lord. Come on, read. For I was hungry. And he, ye gave me meat. Uh huh. I was thirsty. Yes. And ye gave me drink. Come on. I was a stranger. Come on. And ye took me in. Come on. Naked and ye clothed me. Uh huh. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Uh huh. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, what shall we? When saw we thee in hunger? Stop right there. Skip down to verse number forty-one. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, mm -hmm. Depart from me, mm -hmm. ye cursed, uh -huh. unto everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Stop right there. He said, Depart from me. Yeah. Yeah. Ye cursed into the everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Mind you for a moment now. God does not make two bodies in eternity. He does not make a body for hell and a body for heaven. Oh, oh my God. Help. Help him, hell wasn't prepared for you. That's right. That's you right. went to hell as an uninvited guest. That's right. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. That's right. That's it. From the foundation of the world, God created and prepared heaven for you. Yeah. So he had to create you with a body that could endure heaven. One of the brothers was breaking down heaven. Don't you know in our humanistic uh, 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 limitness, we cannot fathom but only so many colors. When you walk into heaven, you're going to see colors that you ain't never seen before. Oh my God. And it's going to be, it's going to be such an other world experience. You're going to see, you, you can't cry. Like we, we talk in the Bible, streets of gold. And it's actually people to think. It's cheap. Heaven ain't gonna have no articles or material or nothing in it as cheap as this little gold is. Amen. We value gold here on earth. Gold is all of that to us. Gold will not. Toilets gonna be made out of more than gold. My Lord. <laughs> it won't be no toilets. We're gonna have a digestive system. <laughs> <laughs> all right. One of them is breaking it down. And then some of them gonna have a man. Well, he was talking about a significant abode, this, that, and the other. Well, they were taking his our terminology as mansion. They said, man, I hope I got nine bathrooms, and I hope I got 40, uh, uh, 14 bedrooms. I hope I got a, a big old walk-in closet. I hope I got an eight-car garage. I hope I got, in my, in my mansion, I hope I got a, a, a huge, huge, a, a thousand square foot kitchen with granite tops, refrigerator, stainless steel. I hope I, and the preacher, my God. As you begin to process us, listen, you ain't going to be hungry, so you ain't going to have no kitchen. <laughs> we ain't going to need no rest. We go over by him day and night, so you ain't going to have no bed. My Lord. All right. You ain't gonna, you're only going to have one robe of righteousness, one heavenly robe, baby. So you ain't going to have a whole bunch of clothes. Amen. Go with me. You ain't gonna, when you see your robe, you ain't going to never want to take it off. My God, you your ears gonna be in tuned up. You gonna hear sounds you ain't never heard before. My Lord, you gonna hear talking about alto soprano tenor. My God, my you gonna hear some stuff you ain't never heard before. My Lord, He said I gotta give you a new body. Don't you know you can only handle so much pain? After you handle so much pain, your body blacks out. It can't contain it. Along the same line, you can only handle so much pleasure. But he said, I got to give you a new body. A body that the slightest thing just would, 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 would blow the mind of this body. Paul got a glimpse of it. And once he got a glimpse of it, he said, hold on. He gave me this glimpse of it that I can inspire y'all. But I really can't write y'all about it. It's so 
powerful, it's unlawful for me to even tell you what I saw. That's how we know that John, when he was writing about in the 21st second chapter of Revelation about the streets of gold, wasn't about heaven because God is no respecter of person. He couldn't tell Paul, you can't write about this place, but John, go ahead and detail it. You don't perceive what he's talking about. He said, you want to have a new body. A body that simply touches something and you feel touching like you ain't never felt. A hug will feel like it ain't never felt before. You got a grandparent. You got a son. You got a daughter. You got a brother or sister in heaven. My Lord, just walking up, giving Jesus a hug. My Lord, you gonna feel something that you ain't never felt in your life. My Lord, don't let me go. My Lord, you're going to process. You're going to see just the beauty. You're going to feel a relief, my God. You're going to feel just a joy you ain't never felt before. My God. He said, but so many. I might go to time and say, but Isaiah the fifth chapter. He said, hell has enlarged itself. He said, here you have a body fit for heaven. But dying in hell, experiencing torment, like you can't believe. Like you can't believe. One moment on the other side of eternity. One moment. We were just reading before we came in. Several accounts of preachers giving accounts of young people sitting in services like this. They refuse to give their lives to God. They refuse to say, Lord, I want to live for you. They refuse. And he began to talk about it one after another. One was a boy, he was a minor. And actually, I'm sorry, we'll come back to that. But one was a young boy sitting in the service. And it was trains in that time. A lot of trains was a major aspect of transportation. And he was sitting in the service. And he said, Preacher, the revival is going on throughout the week. I want your conviction. I want to give my life to God. I want to be saved tonight. But Preacher, I'll come back tomorrow. And I'll give my life to God. He said, about 30 minutes later, down by the road, right there, the loud sound. Preachers all, saints roll, ran down here, cut off at the torso, sitting there, glade dying with this young man. And all, body already began to get cold. All they could think about was him saying, I'll give my heart to God tomorrow. I'll be saved tomorrow. <coughs> One minute on the other side of eternity. One moment. Once the door shut and bring him in to check into his spot for all eternity. At that moment, that service that he just left, I don't know if it was a girlfriend, I don't know if it was some party that was playing, I don't know what the devil told him, but he's going to think about whatever I rejected God for. It's not worth me spending the rest of eternity. One preacher was saying, in order to understand eternity, it says it's like a little bird swimming to the bottom of the ocean. Grabbing is the pebble of sand, swimming all the way back up to the top of the ocean, then flying all the way to the moon, dropping that piece of sand off. Flying all the way back down to earth, swimming all the way down to the bottom of that ocean, grabbing another pebble of sand. Then swimming all way back up, then flying all the way back to the moon, dropping that piece of sand, flying all the way back, and repeating that process, he said, and once he's transported all the sand from the bottom of the ocean, up onto the moon, he said, one hour, and he turned, there is no end to the sentence. He said, at that moment, whatever you had to give up, whatever you had to negotiate, will seem like nothing. One moment later, when you think about it, on the flip side, all those that made the right decision, anything that you was battling to get saved, anything you was battling once you got saved, when the devil was trying to make you go back, and you fought it out, anything that you pressed past when you were back on that wall, Things to your mind, but you press past them, and they seem so big when you was pressing past them. Or while you was in that battle, when you were saved, but you fought out, you hit that altar. You said, "God, deliver me. God, give me strength. I don't want to go 
back. Anything you dealt with, one moment on the other side of eternity, they said it's going to seem like nothing. That's all I had to deal with? That's all I had to give up? That's all I had to do? Hold on. I get all eternity with heaven, with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and all the angels. And all I had to give up was stuff that wasn't good for me? Oh, what a deal I made. Which was clothed in purple and fine linen. Which was clothed in purple and fine linen. And fared sumptuously every day. Purple was a color of royalty. He was well connected. Lavish living, fine living, linen. Fared sumptuously every day. Had much more than he needed. Come on to read. Party hard. Okay. Did his thing. Come on to read. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Come on. Laid at his gate. Full of swords. Come on. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Uh huh. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. We said moreover. In other words, the rich man wouldn't do it. He came and that he feared something. He had more than enough. But here, this man was was in need, and he said, "I'm not going to help him out." One of the number one things that's going to cause an individual to be on the other side of eternity unprepared, selfish. Yeah. If you ask anybody right now, why aren't they saved? Watch what they begin to say. I. I. Well, I. I. And you know what's amazing? We're going to get there in a moment. You're going to die, and you're going to be in eternity with the same spirit you had when you were alive. Way later in this verse, in these verses, the rich man woke up in eternity, and he said, send Lazarus the difference. All the people burning in hell, send Lazarus, the different children, they cool my tongue. Then send them to my house. You're going to die with the same spirits you got. You're going to be in eternity with the same spirits you got. Hear my God, he fed softness with every day. And God said, won't you come give your life to God? God said, hey, no doubt, dealt with him day and night. But he wouldn't get saved. Selfish. Selfish. God needs you. I'm sorry. Pray with me tonight. God, somebody here tonight, it's not just about you. And I pray you write this down or take this into your mind as you leave here. God dealing with you right now. I pray that you realize that it's not about you, but it's about what he can do with you. My Lord. Ooh, my Lord. My Lord. My Lord. All right. <laughs> it's not about you, but it's about what he can do with you. God. That's why he said over there, he said, what did we do? He said, I was naked. But you didn't close me. I was thirsty. You wouldn't give me nothing to drink. I was this. You did it to And at the end he said, you did it to the, as you did it to the least, you did it unto me. But deeper than that, what was he saying there? Why didn't all those goats go to eternity? He got there and he began to look. It wasn't that you got high. It wasn't that you smoked dope. It wasn't just that you poured it in. It wasn't that you robbed that bank. It wasn't those things right there. What really broke him down was, I needed you here. I needed you here. I needed you here. Oh, 
Depart from me, you cursed. Because you wanted to do you when I needed you. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Young man came by the office. Today. He began to go down through different conversations that we had down through the years. Different things that were saved. Different things here and there. And I'm sitting and I'm like, he said, you may not remember this for this. You may not remember this for this. You may not remember you said. And I'm sitting there. And I said, Lord, have mercy. He said, all the things you did to affect me. And I'm saved today. And I flipped it right back home. And I said, you know what? Just as you're saying that, there's individuals who God wants you to impact. God wants you to get in and give your life totally. Give your life sold out. Give everything you've got to him. Because it's not a one-sided deal. He doesn't just forgive you. He doesn't just change you and deliver you. He does that. The Bible said he called them out of Egypt, which was a type of sin, that they may serve him. Right. Not that he may serve them. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Listen, the issue is, I'm not saving you just to bless you. That's when you get a job, you get a salary, and then you get benefits. I'm, the real deal is I need you. I need you tonight. I don't need you to delay no more. You should have been saved. You should. You look at it from that context. See, selfish is going to send folk to hell. Why? I'm going to get saved right before I die. So I can make it in. But what about all those people who could have been saved? You could have got saved earlier. Amen. You're so selfish. My God. Individuals got children. Tell them, I'm going to get saved later. You're going to wait until you go. They get grown. All the time when they were under your tutelage, at home with you, when you should have been having devotion yeah. and praying with them and strengthening them and this, that, and the other. Oh, now wow. they get in, fixed into their way. Don't you know not many old people get saved? And I'm not talking about 90-year-olds. Leave your finger there. Go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Come on and read. On the other side of eternity. Verse 1, please ask the 12 one. Read that quickly. Remember now thy creator. Remember now. Now today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to get saved. Let's get saved tonight. Let's get saved. Let's join the army of the Lord tonight. Let's give our lives and hearts to God tonight. Come on, my God. Remember now thy creator. In the days of thy youth. You were created for God's glory, not for the glory of the world. God didn't give you that voice to be no rapper. God didn't give you that mind, God, that ability to process your mind to be no rapper out there talking about foolishness. Amen. Come on, God didn't give you that uh, uh, a nice personality to seduce men. Amen. Come on now. Right. God wanted you, my God, to use that personality, use that mindset to win souls to his kingdom, my God. God was the real bad. Here he did. Bless all humanity. Gave all these gifts out, all these abilities to humanity, and humanity turned around and don't use them against him. My God, Sam. How does he feel tonight? All that he gave for you. And you want to use it against him. He said, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Why did he say that? Come on and read. While the evil days come not. While the evil days come not. Hold on. While the evil days come not. When you all bound. My God, when you've been wasting everything you got, and now you want to come to God and glass and dragging yourself on in. I'm ready now. My oh, Lord. Lord. My Lord. You also said why the evil days come not. One scripture said they are in holding in holding with the cord to their sins. Don't you know every time you commit a sin, there's spirits with you. All right. My God, there's spirits affiliated with you. You want to sleep down in the basement and you want to grab that book with people with no clothes, all that other mess, go ahead and do it. Oh, there's spirits. You see people right now on death row and killed all these type of people. What happened? When well, they was real young and began to sneak around on the computer and doing all this other stuff. Well, I thought I was just having fun. He said, remember now that grid in the days of that youth. Why? Come on and read. While the evil days come not. While the evil days come not. Nor the years draw nigh. Nor the years draw nigh. Come on. When thou shalt say. When thou shalt say. I have no pleasure in them. 
Now you want to come in? Selfish. Selfish. Well, because you're selfish, you're going to get involved in spirits. And these spirits, my God, going to affect your ability to reason. Going to affect, my God, here you are, want to be safe. Listen, you can see 10 people doing the very thing you're doing. And you will think in your mind, you will be the one. 10 people right before you all got messed up doing the very thing you're doing. And you think and you look at all 10 of them and dog all 10 of them out. But you doing exactly what they did. It'll, it'll mess up your ability to reason. When your young guy gives you an ability to reason, it makes sense. But as you commit sin, it messes up more, messes up more. That's why it's a miracle for an adult to get saved. Because even when you at your wit's end, ain't nothing else left. You down to the very end. When you got that spirit, you will still think, well, I can do this. Come on, come on. You still don't get it? You still don't get it. What you dealing with right now, a lot of y'all children, are children that waited and waited to get saved. And the devil deals with immediate things and long-term things. Like immediately, he may give you a thrill that feels good. So now you want to keep doing it. But long-term, he's giving you spirits that's going to demand that stuff or mess up your reason. So here, all these individuals, after years in sin, after they're tired and beat down, they still ain't nothing else going for them. They call the church, Malik, yeah, how you coming? Call our house, how you doing? Everything good? Yeah, I'm okay. Man, pray for me, man. Man, I ain't got nothing going on. Come on, man. come on. And I'm trying to be like uh, evangelistic. I'm like, man, listen, let all that party go, man. Ah. No, but you don't sound going to parties no more. Nice. I know, man, I, I don't even do this, so I don't. Then what you can say? Right. My Lord, help us. Bound up! Bound up! One of the individuals grew up in church had a great mind, called me all the time, telling me, encouraging me, talking about the way we were raised, devotions that our parents had, and all this oh, other stuff, Lord. messages that they, that they heard, heard preached. All this that makes so much sense. Oh, all they almost exhort the saints. All oh, this, that, and the other. The ability to reason has been just about destroyed. Oh my God, help Unless a miracle happens, God Himself, and I'm going to show you at the end, could come up to Him and say, Let's get saved. Well, God, see, well, thank, thank you for coming. Now, we're just thinking about you coming to deal with me. But, uh, so, hear me say, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Go back home. As we close, go back home to Luke 16. From the other side of the turn, I'm on read. So I verse number 22. And it came to pass Come on. that the beggar died. It came to pass that the beggar died. And was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. It was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. Didn't matter how much money he had, he also died. And was buried. Oh, he was just buried. You see no angel came. Come on read. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. In hell. Torment, burning hell. He still had his eyes. He lifted up his eyes. Come on and read. Being in torment. Being in torment. And seeing Abraham afar off. He had great sight. Seeing Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said. That was said, a poor man. Come on and read. And he cried and Not said. Not to cry. Isn't that amazing? The toughest people, the ones that you couldn't affect. God could have done anything he could have. One moment, one moment. After church, now he's crying. Those tears will yield no food. But if you cry on this side, he said, I'll give you beauty for ashes. Ashes represent mourning. He said, drop a few tears on this side. Godly sorrow work in repentance. Drop a few tears on this side and come for a whole bunch. My Lord, just be a little Sorry. Just let God know you want to live for him. Just let him know you want to serve him. My Lord. He said, you're going to cry. But if you cry on this side, I don't care if you're back. I don't care if you're going far from God as the pastor was saying on Sunday. Just say tonight, Lord, lead me to the pillars one more time. Lord, lead me to the pillars.
to the pillar just one more time. It don't matter how many times you pay. If you can drop a tear, if you can, I mean for real from the heart, a heart tear. Amen. That is an eye tear with a heart. If you can get your heart, if you can accept my God conviction and say, Lord, one individual, my God, sometimes they go to a call and all. My God, I just felt him calling me, so I responded. I didn't feel the brokenness necessary to get saved, but I, I, I responded based upon him calling me. I felt and I sensed I was under conviction and God was dealing with me. Well, I know God don't play games with people. If he dealt with me, then mercy was somewhere with him. Every time he calls, somewhere in his pocket, mercy's coming with him. He don't just come to judge. He don't come just to condemn you. If he calls you, it's because mercy is somewhere. I'm coming up. I ain't fighting against it. I want to be saved. I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't feel the necessary conviction that's necessary to get a breakthrough, especially if you're a backslider. Yeah. Why? Because you want to fight harder to get it the next time as you did the last time. My Lord help. So here, I just felt him do it. The first time, he had just about to knock me over to get me to the altar. Next time, it was a little bit less. Now, my Lord, if I'm going to respond, I got to just sense. Hold on. I can sense he's dealing with me. And by faith, I believe that if he's dealing with me, he'll deliver me. He will change my mind. I thought, my God, many thought, hey man, my brother's exhorting today. I was going to get saved, and I was going to want to be with my boyfriend. I was going to want to be with my girlfriend. I was going to want to go to the party. I didn't realize that he was going to change my mind. I didn't realize that a miracle was going to take place. Amen. I forgot about that, my God. Amen. And I moved because I felt him dealing with me. And I said, God, I feel you dealing with me. My God. One individual came up to the altar. He prayed and said, Lord, pray. Give me a mind to be saved. And listen, some people are sincere with that. Some people are fighting with that. Just trying to get their conscience clear. They just trying to get their conscience at peace. Just so you'll leave them alone. Well, just pray I get a mind to be saved. Listen. God is not going to give you a mind to live saved until you get saved. God is dealing with you to repent. Be sorry for what you've done. Be sorry. I saw he next you have no mind to want to go to church. Yeah, I ain't got no mind to read about. I ain't got no mind. Listen, that comes with regeneration. Yeah. You just come broken and caught. He ain't read. Nowhere that he asked to do by all those with a mind to be saved, come to me. No, 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 no. All those with truth meant for repentance, broken and contract with godly sorrow, willing to say, I'm sorry, God. I messed up. I'm sorry, God. I want to change. I want to be right. Give me back one more chance, Lord. And all he's going to look at is see that you're sincere. The individual went back, came up and said, I'm uh, praying for him. I got invited him to say the brother and pray for him. He got up, walked back to the altar. But uh, uh, two seconds later, he turned around and ran back up to the altar. They said, what's going on? He said, I want to get saved. <laughs> so what? He said, man, hold on. I want to be saved. I just prayed for this, so God gave it to me. Now I want to be saved. <laughs> Hooray! Praise God. Hey. Nice man. God, God deal you with your heart. God deal with your heart. You say, Lord, I can sing to you. I've strayed and I've wandered. But Lord, I want to come back home. I believe you're saying, I'm thirsty, daughter. I need you to come and help me. Daughter, I'm naked. I need you to come and clothe some folk with robes of righteousness. I'm thirsty, daughter. I need you to tell them about the well that should never want to cry. Daughter, I need you, my God. They need to play. He said, I, I was homeless. I know where to play my head. I need you, daughter, to come tell them about the city of Rick. Oh, my Lord. If they can run to my God. He said, all I need is for you to be sorry. Are you willing to labor for me? Come on and read. He said, in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Come on and read. Being in torment. Being in torment. And seeing Abraham afar off. Come on and read. And Lazarus in his bosom. Yes. And he cried and said, Yes. Father Abraham. He cried and said, Father Abraham. Have mercy on me. Have mercy upon me. And send Lazarus. Uh -huh. That he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. You will never get saved trying to get released from your situation. All right. All right. These were the wrong type of tears. He cried and said, have mercy upon me that he may send Lazarus. Lord, give me some relief. Some people are messed up and they just want relief. Listen. You got to say, God, I'm sorry for what I've done to you. It ain't about me no more, God. I'm sorry for what I did to you. I went back. I put you to Opie Shane. The same people I used to preach to. I went back and I was partying with them. I'm sorry. You want to get somewhere with me, you got to come correct. 
let me know, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done to you. If you leave me in the situation I'm in, it's okay. Just save me. Just save me, God. Just give me a chance to feel the joy of my salvation one more time. Just to be able to go to bed and have a witness down in my soul that I'm clear with God. Oh, that's more than I need. Forget about my water. Forget about that. I just want a chance to serve you one more time. Come on, read it. Verse 24. And he cried and said, Yes. Father Abraham. Father Abraham. Have mercy on me. Have mercy upon me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Come on. And cool my tongue. Come on. For I am tormented in this flame. One moment. From the other side of eternity, burning in flames. Didn't even have to be there. Come on and read. But Abraham said, Son, Bobby. remember. That thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good thing. You can do what you wanted to do and die. He said, thy lifetime, that was given to you. You were, you were a free moral agent. You could have done whatever you wanted to do with your life. It was thy lifetime. You done what you wanted. I'm going to talk to you in eternity on the other side. He said, you did what you wanted to do. It was your life. You could have chose to do whatever you wanted to do, but in my lifetime, you made the decision that you wanted. Tonight, God is saying, when you're on this side of eternity, will you take thy lifetime, your lifetime, and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will serve you for the rest of my life. One more chance, Lord. I will serve you, Lord. I will live for you, God. From this moment, just give me one more chance, God, to save my soul tonight. He said on the other side, he's going to say in thy lifetime. Come on and read. And likewise. Read that by reading. No, verse 26. I'm sorry, verse 25. Uh, but, but Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good thing. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. Oh, he seemed messed up. The things that you thought was evil. He's talking to him now. You thought that going to church was evil? Difficult, mean, or, or uh, ill-regarded things. Oh, man. Oh, I think that's evil. What? I can't have, I can't be messing up. I can't smoke that. Oh, that uh, he had evil things. That, go on and read. But now he is comforted. Oh, but now I was different. Come on and read. And thou art tormented. Read. And beside all of this, Come on. between us and you, there is a great golf fist. There is a great golf fist. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. I don't care if it's angels who want to come down that hill. It's fixed. It's a great golf fist. It's fixed. There's no hope for you, son. There's no hope for you. That in itself is too much. There's no hope for you, son. Come on and read Neither can they pass to us that would come from them. And no altar calls in here. No more altar calls. Oh my Lord, no, more, no more altar workers. No more altar calls. It's over. It's over. I'm going to read. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, uh -huh. that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Now he want to be that evangelist he should have been. Now I'm ready to go tell my friends. Now, now I'm ready. Lord, if we go to Honduras, I'm ready, God. I'm ready, God. Now I'll go and tell all my family, come get saved. In thy lifetime, when you had that opportunity, one moment on the other side of eternity, you're going to think about all the things you could have done for God. You will think about all the souls you could have affected for God. But God is saying tonight, through the word of God, I gave you a glimpse of the other side of eternity. But now, we're going to have an altar call. And I'm going to bring you back to this side of eternity. And you can make a decision that will affect you on the other side of eternity. Not only will it affect you on the other side of eternity, but it will affect you on this side of eternity because you can labor for God. Because you can do a work for God. But let me show you how difficult it is for you to reason with yourself when you're bound by spirit. Come on, read. For I have five brethren. That he may testify unto them. He may preach unto them. 
let they also come unto this place of torment. Lord, I don't want them here. Read. Abraham saith unto him, Come on. They have Moses. Come on. And the prophets. They got Moses. They got the word of God. Moses and the prophets. Come on. Let them hear them. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham. Come on. What if Moses said in his word? By the way, he came to heaven and said, Moses, when you're coming here, when he was coming here, refusing rather to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He said, if that don't compel you, the word of God, when Moses could have done anything he wanted to do in the world, could have been that next superstar. Could have been that next in line as the king of Egypt. Could have been any, but he chose rest. He said, I, I'm willing to push away all this world has to offer. To get in to the back with the saints of God. I'm willing to put aside all of that to labor for God. And it was the best decision I made. God said, and you can read him the stories of Moses. If you can read him the stories of Samson, how he messed up. Messed up, backslid, went back on God. But ask God for mercy one more time. I said, Lord, restore my power one more time. And God in mercy showed his mercy and said, yes, you messed up. Yes, you done what you should have done. But I'm not going to judge you right now. Come on back home. And I'll give you a power one more time. I'll restore you one more time. And said that he killed more enemies in his death than he did. compel you to realize that no matter what you've done, I'm willing to forgive you tonight. I'm willing to give it all up. If you don't understand, my God, Moses led them through the Red Sea. Pharaoh and all his army was drowned. In other words, every spirit that you had down in Egypt, my Lord, can be broken. In your mind, you're saying, well, if I can say, what about this? Listen, a majority of what you're dealing with is things that you're interested in because of the spirit you possess. But when you get saved, those spirits are drowned in the Red Sea and they don't motivate your thinking no more. So the things you think you don't want to do after you get saved, they are broken because those spirits are drowned. And when you come through there, you come through as a new creature. Come on, brother. one rose from the dead. The one came from the dead and said, I'm flame, I'm burning, my teeth are burnt out, my hair, my clothes is oh, sinned, I'm from hell. Please, go get saved. He said, that same reasoning spirit that will reason away the inspiration of the law and the prophets will reason that person coming from hell and you still won't come. One moment on the other side of eternity, you're going to want and desire the opportunity that God has given us on this side. In thy lifetime, it's only you, Joseph. Amen. Amen. Tonight, if you want a prayer, if you want to be saved, let's come on up right down. Let's come on up. Those who want to be saved, come on up here. Come on up here. We're going to kneel right here. Amen. Those who want to be saved, come on up. Come on up. Let's bring us some chairs. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. This time. This time. Anybody else? Let's come on up. Let's come on up. Let's come on up. This time. It's time to get right with God. We don't want to delay any further. We delayed too long already. Those that want to be saved. Amen. We need to schedule a baptism. We need to schedule a baptism. God is dealing tonight. God is dealing. Go ahead and heal right here. I know it hurts a little bit, but it's okay to be in pain now. Amen. I know it hurts. Don't curse. Come on up here. I'm going to heal right here. My Lord. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Let's come on up. Let's come on up. Let's come on up. Let's come on up. It's time. It's time. On the other side of eternity.
Anybody else? My God, it's time. It is time. It is time. Anybody else? Anybody else? My night is time. As they sing, as they sing. Don't all think it. Don't all think it. Let's come get saved tonight. Let's come get saved tonight. Upon Let's, my heart. On my heart. On my heart.
The Bible said, and it shall be as in the days of Noah. Saints that are just a little bit older, you're going to realize what it's talking about. Just a few years back, services like this, jam-packed. These are not people that are here tonight that are atheists that don't believe in Jesus. These are people here tonight that are, are, are nine years old bound by cracking and meth. These are our children. Just a few years ago, their hearts were so tender. After a message like this, a service like this, songs like this, my God, they would be back. What Jesus said, if you want to know when I'm about to split the clouds, he said, go read the book of Noah. Whatever he preached, these were the grandchildren of Enoch, Church of God children, looked him in the face and said, I can't wait till your altar call get over. I'm not getting saved and it don't matter what you say. Don't talk to me about getting saved, okay? I don't care what you say to me, Daddy. Mom, it don't matter to me. I'm not getting saved. God will look down and see the hearts of men even continually and say, you don't want me. I'm delaying time for you, but you don't want me. So therefore, Gabriel, in time. The only reason why I'm delaying it is for you. But I'm not in your plans anymore. You don't care about me. You don't care about laboring for me. You don't care about all those children at your school, all those young people that would get saved if you got saved. You don't care about that no more. I'm delaying for you. And you don't want me. So therefore, I'm going to leave you alone. Where we at today, saints, is at the brink of eternity. And the only thing that's going to work is prayer. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to gather up here and we're just going to pray that God has mercy. Don't care what you preach. Don't care what devotions you have at home. None of that's working through here. The devil has this generation of young people in the clutches of his hands and he will not let them go because he knows if one of those church of God young people get saved and get sanctified for real, they're going to cause me a fit. They got truth. They're going to cause me some headaches. So I refuse to let one of them go. We're done singing. We're going to gather up here tonight. We're going to pray for our children. We're just going to pray for our children. We're going to pray for our children. It's the only hope. As the days of Noah, he said, get your families and bring them in the ark. Lions coming and tigers coming. They still wouldn't get saved. We you got man, man, and man. He said it's going to be men, man, and men. Ten years ago, five years ago, wasn't no man trying to marry a man. Right before your eyes, prophecy being fulfilled. Gay marriage, children disobedient. Everything he said happened right before your eyes. And still our children. You ready to get saved? No, 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 man, I'm good. You good. You're on the outside of the ark, looking in, and I don't know what else it's going to take. God performed miracles. God had mercy. God sent inspiration, but nothing can move a person today. We're thankful that we can pray. We're going to look to God in prayer that he would do something, that he will some type of way reach our families. We're going to look to God in prayer and come down and just help us out. Help us out with our children so our children can make it. Let's bow our heads. Every head bow. Every head bow. Every head bow. Sister Michelle Warren, you wouldn't mind coming up here and pray. Every head bow. Every head bow. If you have children that are not here, I want you to call their names out in this prayer. That this inspiration will go and find them on the other side of eternity. We don't want our children not to be there with us. That's just a horrible thought. I don't, I don't know what God's going to do. He's going to have to take the saints' memory away because if any of my children are not in heaven with me, I'm going to be looking for them. And if I don't see it, I don't know how I can enjoy heaven knowing that they're not there with me because there's only one other place. I don't know how he's going to deal with that. I think about my little son, Lonely, and I say, as soon as I get there, because I know he's there. But here we fight with everything we know to fight with. Trying our best. Give them a good life. Keep them from evil. Keep them from spirit. Keep them from all this internet foolishness. But still, let them have fun. Be nice to them and still, nothing we can do or say. They want the enemy and the world as bad as they can get it. We're going to pray tonight. We're going to pray. Father in heaven, we come to Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity on this side of eternity, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus, for saving our souls that we can have a burden for others, Lord. Father, we pray that your spirit will come down through this place, Lord Jesus, and move on the souls, Lord God, of men and women, boys and girls. Oh, God, reach down into the heart. Dear Father, oh Lord, move, dear Father God, we pray. 